morning everybody. Welcome in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. It's a joy to have you with us this morning and sharing this service from Mount Zion Church in Cardigan. And if you want to know anything more about the church activities, please visit the website where you'll find all the notices there. My wife Jan is going to be giving us the prayer points today and Alex, one of our elders, is going to be giving us the message. Before my wife gives the prayer points, she's asked me to read this particular verse. And it comes from Acts chapter 4 and it's verse 12. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. At this time of year, children and teachers have returned to school for the start of a new term. It's also the time for universities and colleges to welcome new first year students and returning students. This is a very exciting time, but I'm sure it can be also very stressful for young people and their parents as they move away from home for the first time. For many years now, I have prayed and been very interested in the work of the UCCF, University Colleges and Christian Fellowships. Christian unions are groups of students from a range of local churches who join together and help everyone at university engage with a life-changing ministry of Jesus. They are led by students, resourced by staff workers and relay workers, and supported by the local churches. During the pandemic, the CUs not only survived, but were trained and supported to use new methods in campus evangelism. This term, they're preparing to launch into a crucial year of gospel outreach. We at Mount Zion have a personal interest in this vital ministry, as you one starts his work with UCCF in Cardiff as a relay worker and Tim works with students at Harbour Church in Portsmouth. Please join with me in praying for firstly the many students to hear the good news of Jesus and his love through the work of the UCCF and local churches. Secondly please pray that the Holy Spirit will be at work powerfully in students lives bringing many to faith in Jesus. Also pray for Ewan and Tim as they share the gospel with young people. And fourthly, pray for our own young people, Molly, Isaac and Aleri, as they return to college or university. Welcome. I was 25 and aimless. My marriage had collapsed and we had not made our first anniversary. The hippie scene of love and flower in your hair had gone sour in San Francisco. I saw an ad in the paper to invest in a gold mining scheme in the Sierra Mountains in Northern California. What did I have to lose? Just a little money. Well, quite a bit of money. A group of others. Can I say it? Losers ended up panning for gold in the ice-cold waters of Grizzly Creek, sleeping in an old bunkhouse of the 
copper walker mine. One day a truck returned from Taylorsville, 16 miles away, where we bought provision and checked for mails at the post office. Alex, you have a letter. It's from my old buddy, Eric. He had seen Rini in Boston. She was angry at me. Wouldn't be the first time or the last. There were plenty of reasons for her anger. I guess I should have been angry because she had left me. Instead, I was so excited she was angry. I right then decided to walk the 16 miles to Taylorsville to the nearest telephone. I told her, Rini, get out of Boston. This is the most beautiful part of the world, living in the middle of these majestic mountains. I was telling the story to my friend Lance. Hey, Lance Rini quit her job and drove 3,000 miles to join me. Lance looked at me with a questioning look. She drove 3,000 miles for you? Ah, it's good to have honest friends. We slept every night under the stars until we woke up and the water was frozen. We got a job and house as the caretakers of a 2,000-acre ranch in the Genesee Valley. From the outside, it looked like we were living the life. We were living off the land, beautiful garden, milking our cow and goats and riding horses. But if you looked a little closer, you would find two empty people living in separate bedrooms with a trail behind us of abortion, adultery, pain. We were trying to fill the emptiness with drugs and seeking some spiritual enlightenment with this guru or that book. Now, Rini's sister was visiting the family home in Ohio. Holly and her husband were medical missionaries exchanging a, quite a lucrative career as a doctor and nurse in the United States to tell the good news of Jesus in North Africa. Well, that was beyond me. Rini said she wanted to visit her sister. But that wasn't the whole story I discovered later. She was also planning to visit her old boyfriend in Boston. Now, you might be thinking this story is going on a bit, but and what's the point? Well, one of the most effective and well-known evangelists in our lifetime has been Billy Graham. You may not have heard of him, but I discovered Sandra Payne and even Jan Thomas's parents accepted Jesus at his meetings in the UK. <clears throat> Excuse me. When he died at the age of 99, a television station in Cleveland, Ohio, looked into their archives to put together a news broadcast. They wrote, Graham's Crusades were an event and as such much sought after. According to our archives, Cleveland pursued Graham for years. In 1972, Billy Graham decided the time was right, decided the time was right for a crusade at the old Cleveland Municipal Stadium. Now, what are the chances that when Rini got to Ohio, her sister Holly was a volunteer at the Billy Graham meetings? Graham was being interviewed on TV, and Rini wanted to go with Holly. Well, the next thing I got was a letter from Rini saying she had gotten saved in a Billy Graham crusade. What? That Elmer Gantry charlatan who hung out with that discredited President Nixon? Give me a break. But Rini came back. Let me put it mildly. I did not exactly encourage Rini in her newfound faith. Well, months later, our friends David and Pam knocked on our door one dark night. David, he said, had found what we'd been looking for. Jesus! Oh, give me a break. They had revisited a hippie commune on the Mendocino coast. But something had changed. Everyone was praising Jesus. They decided to stay. The commune had a saying, whosoever will may come. It was not just words. They practiced it. Rini and Diane, who had just accepted the Lord, hitchhiked to the Lord's land, the new name of the commune. When Rini returned, she wanted me to visit this place. I reluctantly agreed. But I'd not be influenced by these Jesus freaks. Well, after arriving, everyone kept telling me Jesus was alive and I could know him too. Mind you, I said Jesus Christ quite a lot. If someone told a crazy story, I would say, Jesus Christ. 
but it was not exactly praise. Anyway, how can any intelligent person believe the Bible? It was utterly foolish. But this group of friendly people were so welcoming to me. They weren't the holier-than-thou types. They didn't ask for money to eat and stay with them. I was a stranger, and they welcomed me. Could I suggest two thoughts I have with you? First, as I look back at my life, I can see God was working in my life way before I attended that little Pentecostal chapel the very next day. Herman got up and sang that corny, you would probably say cheesy song, Smile a while and give your face a rest. Raise your hands to the one we love the best. Then shake hands with somebody new. And smile, smile, smile. Oh, my goodness. But my life was changed when I lifted my hands. When I recently read that Billy Graham decided the time was right to have a crusade in Cleveland, I began to cry. If you look back at your life before Christ, I believe you too will see God working, even if you were indifferent or even against him. Our new neighbors asked how we came to live in Wales. I told them the story how God had given me a dream of Rini and I running down the field, holding Alyssa between us running toward the sea. I knew it was from God. And I knew it was somewhere in the South Wales area. Our neighbor said, you know, they didn't do it that way. They had a certain type of property in a certain price range they were looking for and searched the Internet. That is how they moved here. When I came home, I realized God had brought them here, too. They just didn't know it yet. My second thought is this. Hospitality is a powerful element in the kingdom of God life. The warm welcome of these new believers of this commune had a profound effect on me. Now, Rini, I've been looking at the book of Acts again, and what a journey it has been. Luke is a master storyteller of events, both that he witnessed and also what he heard about from others. In our Bible translations, it is chapter 10. It's a pivotal shift in the early days of the church but it was not without its critics. Chapter 10 and verse 1 at Caesarea, Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion, which was known as the Italian Regiment. He and all his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. One day at about three in, about what time? Three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius. Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord? he asked. The angel answered, Your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. Now send men to Joppa to bring back a man named Simon, who is called Peter. He is staying with Simon the tanner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had gone, Cornelius called two of his servants and a devout soldier who was one of his attendants. He told them everything had happened and sent them to Joppa. About noon the following day, as they were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up to pray. He became hungry and wanted something to eat, and while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw heaven open and something like a large sheep being let down to earth by its four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals as well as reptiles and birds. And then he heard a voice saying, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. Oh, oh no, surely not, Peter replied. I've never eaten anything impure or unclean. But the voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. And this happened, how many times? Three times. And immediately the sheet was taken back to heaven. Wow, this three times must have been a big thing in Peter's life. He probably remembered when he denied the Lord three times. And he probably recalled how when Jesus asked him, the risen Lord asked Peter, do you love me three times? 
While Peter was wondering about the meaning of the vision, the men sent by Cornelius found out where Simon's house was and stopped at the gate. They called out asking if Simon was known as Peter was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the spirit said to him, Simon, three men are coming to look for you. So go, get up, go downstairs and do not hesitate to go with them. Peter went down and said to the man, I'm the one you're looking for. Why have you come? The man replied, we've come from Cornelius, the centurion. He is a righteous man and God-fearing man who is respected by all the Jewish people. The holy angel told him to ask you to come to his house that he could hear what you have to say. And then Peter did an interesting thing. He invited the men into the house to be his guests. The next day, Peter started out with them and some of the believers from Joppa went along. And the following day, he arrived in Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them and called together his relatives and close friends. As Peter entered the house, Cornelia met him and fell at his feet in reverence. But Peter made him get up, stand up. He said, I'm only a man myself. While talking with him, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. He said to him, said to them, you are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with or visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anything or anyone impure or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without raising any objection. May I ask why you sent for me? And Cornelius, it was famous three. Three days ago, I was at my house praying at this hour at three in the afternoon. And suddenly a, a man in shining clothes stood before me and said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayer and remembered your gifts to the poor. Send to Joppa for Simon, who's called Peter. He's a guest in the home of Simon the Tanner who lives by the sea, so I sent for you immediately, and it was good of you to come. Now we are all here in the presence of God to listen to everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. Then Peter began to speak. Wow, I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem, and they they killed him by hanging him on a cross. But, I like that but, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Wow, that's a good sermon, Peter. And I think he's just getting warmed up. But while Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard him, them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Well, surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They've received the Holy Spirit, just as we have. So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. Wow, something powerful happens when we welcome strangers. The Greek for hospitality is philozenia, which means literally the love of strangers. Hospitality is not inviting people that you like or just like you. Look what happened when Cornelius invited Peter. It was a radical turning point in the church. The gospel was for everyone. 
Surprise, surprise, not everyone was happy. This is before the internet or telephones or anything like that, and the apostles and the believers throughout Judea heard the Gentiles had also received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, and that was about 32 miles away, the news had spread faster than he could even travel. The circumcised believers criticized him and said, You went into the house of an uncircumcised man and ate with him? Well, I'll tell you, the move of the Holy Spirit attracts critics like honey attracts flies. We just finished reading Acts, and if you bear with me, I'll read parts of the last chapter. Paul was shipwrecked in Malta. In verse 7, it says there was an estate nearby that belonged to Publius, the chief official of the island. He welcomed us to his home and showed us generous hospitality for three days. He welcomed us to his home and showed us generous hospitality for three days. His father was sick in bed, suffering from fever and dysentery. Paul went to see him and after prayer placed his hands on him and healed him. And the chapter finishes in verse 30. For the two whole years, Paul stayed in his own rented house and welcomed all who came to see him. And he proclaimed the kingdom of God and taught about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. Father, we thank you how you're working in us and in those around us. May we provide a warm welcome wherever we go. Hallelujah. Thank you for listening to me today and may the Lord bless you this week as you Walk with him in the power and the blessing of the Holy Spirit. May you welcome strangers into your house and receive the blessing and see what God will do. Uh, He's given a wonderful invitation to all of us over and over again in the Gospels. Come to the table. Come and sup. Come and eat with him. Hallelujah. God bless you. Bye for now.